You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. One of the most surprising moves of transfer deadline day was when Atletico Madrid completed the signing of Antoine Griezmann from Barcelona, all of a sudden seemingly out of nowhere. Griezmann, who only left Atletico two years ago, had responded to speculation about his future as recently as the opening day of the season, saying, I hope I get to play another 100 games and carry on giving everything to make history with this club. But now he'll play none games. Because as you probably already know from the first sentence I said in this video, Griezmann jumped ship faster than a Mississippi leapfrog on a dune bug. His move back will initially be on loan, with a mandatory 40 million euros option to buy. Now that sounds confusing, doesn't it? They should call it a clause. Santa! Anyway, this mandatory 40 million euro option to buy sounds like real good business from Barcelona, doesn't it? Who signed the player in July 2019 for 120 million euros. And so just to really hammer this home, Barcelona paid 120 million euros for a player that they didn't particularly need to buy in the first place. Then they paid him 400,000 euros a week in wages for decent but unspectacular returns. And then they sold him back to the club that they'd signed him from two years prior at an 80 million euros loss after that same club had won the league. And just to reiterate, just, just one more time, one more time. Barcelona bought a player that they didn't need, gave one of their all-time best strikers, Luis Suarez, away to Atletico for free, and then Luis Suarez ended up winning the league with Atletico, and Barcelona then sold Griezmann back to that team for an 80 million euro loss. Por favor! In fact, going back to 2019, when Barcelona signed Griezmann in the first place, they haggled with Atletico over the structure of that deal, hoping to pay it in instalments. These attempts were rejected, forcing Josep Bartomeu to meet the release clause and pay it outright. Now, to do this, Barcelona required external financial support and so took out a six-month unsecured loan of 35 million euros and an 85 million euro loan from 23 Capital mortgaged against future income. Now that's like being so desperate to buy a boat that you remortgage your house and then you sell the boat back to the shop you bought it from two years later at an 80 million euro loss because you can't afford to live in your house anymore. And also, the boat shop won La Liga. <coughs> the thing is, very few of the players Barcelona actually wanted to get rid of or would have accepted bids for were sold. Philippe Coutinho, Usman Dembele and Samuel Umtiti are all still at the club on large wages. And so, just to reiterate, just, just one final time. Not only did Barcelona sell very few of the players they actually needed or wanted to, but they also made their direct rival much stronger by selling one of the players they wanted to keep at an enormous loss. Now this is like the time where I was in a zombie uprising and I managed to stay alive alongside a fellow human who we'll call Diego. Now in order to defend ourselves against the zombies, we needed to acquire weapons with which to strike them down. And while hiding in a supermarket, I noticed that Diego had a really useful looking mallet. I wanted the mallet and so I agreed a deal with Diego where I gave him a broom I chiseled into a, a sharp point with all the money that I had in my pockets to, to acquire the lovely the lovely mallet. The zombies had us cornered, but Diego and I climbed through the inside of the supermarket to eventually reach the roof. It took great skill and balance, and I was sad to leave, because all the bread behind smelled so good, and I love to eat bread. If I could live in a supermarket, I would do it, because they always have bread, and I could eat the bread. I really love bread. Imagine being in a supermarket, and every day you could have a tiger bread, or a snake bread, which is what they should call the long ones, which are actually called baguettes. What I'm trying to say is that I really, really like bread. I love to eat bread. Bread! Anyway, eventually the zombies consumed and murdered me shortly after I realized that I didn't need a mallet at all. What I should have done was keep the pointy broom thing, which is far more effective than a mallet against a zombie. And also, I should have kept my money too, so I could buy more bread. I could have bought all the bread and put it inside my mouth. I want to eat bread. I love bread. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I want bread in my tummy. I really want to eat bread. Bread! And I did eat the bread, but at a loss of 80 million euros. Now, one last thing. While Griezmann's massive salary is now off the books, Atletico aren't compelled to activate the mandatory sale clause until 2023, meaning that Barcelona may have to wait a while for their 40 million euros to arrive, leaving that 1.3 million euros debt looking quite bad. 
And this all for a player who at the time had recently turned 28, who didn't obviously make Barcelona better, and who was never likely to have any substantial resale value. Now, incidentally, 23 Capital, who were one of the lenders for the Griezmann transfer, were also heavily involved in the transfer of Joao Felix from Benfica to Atletico Madrid during that same summer. And Barcelona turned to the London-based firm after being denied the required credit by traditional lenders. The cost of that facility remains unclear. What is known, however, is that such short-term liquidity obviously came at a price. The club reported an 18% reduction in revenue for the 2019-20 season, attributable in part to the pandemic, and at the beginning of 2021 revealed a transfer debt of 205 million euros. The initial Griezmann deal obviously didn't add to that, he was fully bought and paid for, but the deal still encapsulates the short-term thinking that has allowed Barcelona to arrive at this point. Whoopee! The Griezmann situation is not good, of course, and in fact, in the words of The Athletic's Liam Toomey, it's an era-defining shambles, and according to The Athletic's Dermot Corrigan, it marks a suitably undignified end to Barca's awful summer. These may turn out in the future to be generous descriptions. I want to eat bread now. I really, really love bread. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Manchester United reporters revealed the truth behind the club's Jadon Sancho transfer fiasco, where the Tottenham reporters brought you news of Gareth Bale's return before anyone else, where the Chelsea reporters told us three days before his sacking that Frank Lampard was on the verge of losing his job. And you can try it now for free for 30 days. See the link in the description.